what would be the worst thing to hear as you're going under anesthesia before a surgery. Let's hope this doesn't go like the last one. Works with both. But doctor, the last one failed. But doctor, the last one was successful. But doctor, the last one was successful. Yeah but this one's an organ donor no. I don't think doctors really think this way about organ donors. And he's a match for my kid. Doctor, is this the circumcision or the testicle removal? Nurse, I thought it was the appendectomy. Narrator, it was a root canal. There's no way anyone could fuck up that badly. Narrator, there was. Robert Liston was a competent surgeon who contributed significantly to medicine as a science. Then he had the misfortune to have one seriously bad day and became a legend in the medical community. A Scottish surgeon who practiced all over Britain. He earned respect for his skill in amputations. Liston practiced in the early 1800s, before anesthesia was popular. Cutting and sawing on a conscious, shrieking patient took strong nerves and a strong stomach. The shorter the operation, the lesser the suffering of the patient and the greater the chance that the patient would survive. Liston could amputate a leg in 2 minutes. This was impressive, but it came with impressive drawbacks. Keep in mind, the patient spent the entire procedure fighting as hard as they could, the multiple medical assistants whose job it was to hold the screaming patient down. In the confusion, doctors had been known to miss, amputating more than they needed to. As the legend goes, one day Liston amputated much more than he needed to. While amputating the patient's leg at the hip, Liston accidentally sliced through the fingers of one of his assistants. That would have been bad enough, but it proved disastrous when the patient's stump turned gangrenous. The saw must have been contaminated because the assistant became ill and infected too. Within a few days, both the patient and the assistant died. However, this single surgery took a victim even earlier. The procedure was being observed by an elderly doctor in a dress coat with long tails. In the confusion, Liston cut through the man's coat. He wasn't cut, but because blood was spurting around, the old gentleman didn't know that. Feeling the tug, and seeing himself covered in blood, the man collapsed on the floor, had a heart attack, and died. Liston, therefore, had performed a surgery with a 300% mortality rate. Actually happened to me story. I had surgery at Walter Reed Army Medical Center, while I was in the service. Right shoulder they were prepping me beforehand and I was in a bed sitting up with my shirt off. On my shoulder, they drew a large R with a circle around it in purple marker, and then had me sign my name underneath it, so they did the correct one. Then they gave me something to start putting me under. It took a few minutes and I started feeling pretty drowsy. Next, a nurse came in, and inserted and taped down in fourth line in my right forearm, and told me they were giving me whatever was going to knock me all the way out. Then they started cleaning my left shoulder with iodine and the last thing I heard as I was going out was you're doing the wrong one. Found out later that a lot of the people involved with the surgery were still in training. At least the surgeon knew what he was doing though, and he did the correct shoulder. I had knee surgery as a teenager. The doctor brought me a sharpie and told me to circle the correct knee and put an X on the other then he left the room. So I did exactly as instructed. Then I drew arrows to the circle, and wrote operate here, and drew more X's on the other leg and wrote, do not touch. I sat there bored for another 30 minutes writing random stuff all over my body, like you can't have my appendix, and why are you looking up here? Focus on the day. I even heard my mom write on my back something like, if you can read this, wrong side. Flip me over. Then I covered up with the sheet and the anesthesiologist showed up. I was told that I said some weird stuff while I was going under, but that is a different story. The surgery went fine, I had to stay in the hospital overnight. When the doctor came into my room to check on me, he said that I had thrown off their schedule, because when they uncovered me and saw all of the notes, that they laughed for 10 minutes. When they finally got their composure, they rolled me up on my side to get me onto the operating table and saw the note on my back and lost it again. He said that the surgery started about 30 minutes later than it was supposed to thanks to my drawings and notes. When I was 9, I almost lost my right toe in a bicycle accident. My mom carried me to the family car and drove me to the hospital. Before I underwent surgery, the doctor said, if this doesn't work, we might have to cut your foot off to avoid a staph infection. 
Thank god the surgery was successful. Let's take the kidney too, he wouldn't know. I know what you did with my wife, you beat her at checkers, and you'll regret it. Five years later after another surgery, we thought we needed to remove your appendix, but it was already gone. In its place, these two checkers pieces with who's king now, scratched in them. When I was being prepped for surgery, the nurses were joking with the anesthesiologist about the work Christmas party the night before. I asked whether I should be worried. They said the surgeon was wearing a hula girl outfit and dancing on the table. They swore me to secrecy. I don't specifically recall, but the nurses told me. When the surgeon turned up I said to him I hear you have a nice pair of coconuts before I passed out. It was the 90s. Life was simpler then. This one's going to be tasty. I like it. Straightforward. True to life. I can really believe the doctor might say this. That's what makes it doubly frightening. Asterisk H-E-A-R-S a tape being inserted into a VCR asterisk high. There. Welcome to the first video in the so this is your first surgery series. Today, we learn about open heart surgery. Hello, I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from other instructional videos such as Slice or Dice, an amputation guide, or which hole is the best hole for this surgery. Over the course of the next few hours, I will show you the do's and the do's, not of performing advanced level surgery. Not before, but during. My mom was having some major surgery done on her knee I think. The sleeping gas petered out, and she woke up, but still wasn't feeling pain. She heard them hammering and drilling with power tools, and looked up to see what was going on. A nurse noticed her, slammed her head down, before she could see and told her, don't, look. My nan had her knee replacement done under local, because general would probably have killed her, because she wanted to watch, but couldn't fully sit up. The surgeons wired up their recording, kit to a big screen TV, even let her have a copy. The NHS fucking rocks. We are doing the left, right, right. I work at a hospital and part of the safety training we have to go through actually discuss is always using correct instead of right, because it commonly leads to mistakes. They mentioned that it's easy to tell when an employee is new at this point, because they'll say right during a meeting, meaning correct, and it sounds weird to everyone else. Not exactly the same but it's funny. When I had my sinus surgery, I remember them wheeling me back and going over everything that was about to happen. However, I was unaware that when they do surgery on your face, upper body at least, they strap your arms down. Which definitely seems obvious to me now because definitely, no one wants a flailing arm knocking the doctor while he's performing surgery on your face. But they didn't mention it, so I didn't think about it. So we get back to the surgery room. They put the mask on me, and tell me to start counting. While I was counting they proceeded to strap my arms down in multiple places which makes me panic. I stop counting and go wait. Guys can we talk about this? That's the last thing I remember before going under. Then I woke up in recovery. And everyone thought it was hilarious that was the last thing I said, before I was out. I'm no medical person. But that seems to be the kind of thing they would usually wait until you're under four so as not to worry you. Like the time I had tonsils out and got a general and they start talking about what they're gonna do but someone, the anesthetist, kind of says shhh he's not out yet. Like it didn't freak me out cause it seemed they merely didn't want to worry me or freak me out and I kind of liked having that sneak peek of what they are actually doing and thinking about it is really really weird how inexact a science and anesthesiology is and how to control the dosage they literally have to guess how much to give you and keep an eye out for whether you seem to be waking up. Surgeon 1. Is he out yet? Surgeon 2. No. Surgeon 1. It will be fine. True story. Got my skull drilled to get our teeth. I did not think it was fine. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to turn on notifications, so you'll be sure to know when the next video comes out. Want to watch some more? Check out my other videos. I really do appreciate everyone who helps make these videos possible. And as always, thanks for watching.